okay so thanks thank thank you everyone for joining this so we are uh, kochi mule soft meetup group and uh, myself and uh, supriya we are the the meetup leaders over here and today we are going to have a very exciting session so we have a very amazing uh, speaker with us today okay so we are trying going to understand how we can implement uh, cloud up 2.0 ci cd pipeline with bitbucket integration so that is the topic which we going to cover today and uh, hope everyone is able to hear us uh, yeah we are the microphones are muted and but uh, you will be able to ask questions in the chat you know we will be addressing all those questions don't worry about it okay so okay, you can put your questions there okay we are happy to address all of them and uh, anup is also here okay so don't worry so let's move on so basically this is a we generally we do a safe harbor statement this comes from the you know soft side and uh, what we generally we say you know both the speakers and host we are organizing this meetup purely in an individual capacity okay and we are not representing our companies here so it's purely on our uh, individual capacity we are doing this and uh, the presentation is strictly for learning purpose only organizer or presenter you know do not hold any responsibility that you know the same solution will work for your business requirements also because it could be different you know customer to customer client to client the environment you know the situation scenarios their uh, process everything will be different so there is no guarantee such this is a purely a, uh, you know a lab kind of an environment we have created just for to understand the technology okay and the presentation is not meant for any promotional activities too okay and uh, these are some uh, housekeeping uh, which normally we do for the session so we generally we upload a recording of this meetup uh, within 24 hours uh, and uh, you can ask your questions you know in the chat questions you know the chat chat is the place where you can put all your questions so make it more to interactive you know uh, and uh, give us feedback guys it's very important because uh, rating uh, this meetup session is you know by giving your uh, valuable feedback and it's going to be you know very very important for us and uh, hope everyone will make it at the end of the day okay and we definitely will love feedbacks okay so i'm just uh, giving an introduction to myself and uh, you know uh, basically my full name is sandeep krishnan so i work as a integration lead and as a technical instructor for ngc labs and i'm one of the meetup leader so i have almost 15 plus years of integration experience i'm a certified news of developer integration architect and platform architect as well okay so that's all about me i have my core uh, i mean uh, you know co supriya co lead uh, meetup leader supriya is also here so supriya you want to give a intro? yes so thank you thank you sandeep i have a uh around 10 years of experience, uh, the all experiences in integration technologies. I currently work with uh, Accenture UK and uh, uh, from London. And uh, of course, I'm certified and I have worked uh, as a developer in the beginning and then currently as an architect and sometimes in sales also. Uh, so yeah, that's all about me. Thank you. Thank you, Supriya. Yeah, here you go. He's our beautiful... Uh, presenter speaker for the day his looks everything has changed right now this is one of his old photograph maybe some of you might be thinking oh this is not the person man i'm <laughs> in front of the camera no he's the one okay so i know i'll just hand it over to you so i'll just yeah. stop sharing you can just take it up from here man thank you so much i know taking all your precious time and you know giving us support okay no worries thank you um i will share my screen Okay. Hey, um, hello everyone. Um, as many of you might know me like here, uh, my name is Anu Pramachandran. I'm, um, I'm an integration architect at NJC Labs um, and also a, a colleague uh, with, uh, with Sandeep, like, as a technical instructor. So we do trainings uh, for MuleSoft. 
for different architects, uh, I mean, different organizations as well. And apart from that, um, I'm uh, active in the community. So writing writing some blogs, uh, attending meetups, organizing meetups. I'm also a Calicut meetup uh, leader. So we, we do organize uh, meetups in, in MuleSoft. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm based, out, based out in Melbourne currently. Yeah. So that's that's pretty much about me. So let's, let's get into today's uh, discussion. So, the agenda of this uh, today's discussion is to give you an overview of how to create a CI CD pipeline um, for um, for Cloud Up 2.0 using a Bitbucket, uh, Bitbucket uh, tool. And uh, now this particular topic can be uh, very elaborate. So here uh, we are only going to discuss on the very ba bare minimum CI CD pipeline that you can create and you can advance or you can improve upon uh, improve upon that uh, with different uh, complexities different stages that you can include in your pipeline so um, so we are going to touch base upon a brief uh, overview of what cloud up 2.0 uh, is um, if, you, if you're not aware of cloud 2.0 and how do we deploy cloud 2.0 um, cloud up 2.0 applications uh, now there is certain differences, uh, a slight difference in how do you deploy an application to Cloud of One and Cloud of Two Point Zero, and uh, we uh, are going to look into a brief overview of what a CI/CD pipeline is, and um, and uh, and yeah, a, a basic introduction of CI/CD, and what are all the Maven configurations that you would need to do to your palm.xml file uh, in order to deploy applications to Cloud 2.0. And finally, uh, creating that Bitbucket pipeline for Cloud 2.0. So here, um, we are going to use uh, Bitbucket as the source code management as well, but you can very well use any other source code management tools like GitHub or um, <coughs> Azure, et cetera. Right, uh, but here we are going to just look into the um, bit bucket itself. Fine. Uh, so Cloud Up 2.0, it's a uh, it's a latest uh, uh, deployment uh, or uh, integration platform as a service that is offered by MuleSoft. And um, it it is built on top of runtime uh, fabric. Uh, Runtime fabric. So it means that um, you deploy when you deploy an application, you you are going to deploy that into a a pod um, that that is a Docker Kubernetes container, and uh, instead of instead of a virtual machine that you usually do in Cloud One Point Zero, but that's all under the hood. Uh, we don't have to worry about it. But uh, Cloud Two Point Zero is an integration platform as a service which is provided by uh, MuleSoft. That's the latest offering by MuleSoft. And uh, uh, and obviously, it's a secure cloud infrastructure. It provides you uh, with uh, all the basic securities uh, that any any integration platform provides you. And uh, uh, and as I said, it, it it is based on the replica management. So you uh, are hosting on a containers, um, hosting on a uh, containers which which I meant as pods, and then. Um, it, it it runs in a Docker Kubernetes cluster, so which means that uh, many things are controlled by that uh, runtime fabric uh, solutions, like uh, um, your uh, uh, downtime. It checks for it pings the uh, pods for downtime, and it automatically um, redeploys applications. So those kinds of uh, capabilities are inbuilt in the runtime fabric solution that we have. And obviously, we also have an application isolation. So when you deploy an application, you, you will be deploying that into a single pod, um, and then no other application can be uh, mixed together, uh, which means that you have an application isolation. So there is no performance issues which related to the mule runtime, um, like you have it in customer host environments. Yep, so those are some of the features of um, Cloud up 2.0. Now uh, we are currently focused on deploying applications uh, to Cloud up 2.0, so that's why I, I'm not focusing on other aspects of Cloud up 2.0 or other features of Cloud up 2.0. Um, 
Now, when you want to deploy ML applications to Cloud Up 2.0, <clears throat> there are a couple of options that you have, obviously. So one is a platform UI. Um, you have a, uh, you can go to your runtime manager and then let me actually show you that. So you should be able to go to your runtime manager. <coughs> and, uh, okay. So right when I need it, it's not coming. Um, okay, yeah, there you are. So let me. So you can you can actually deploy an application by providing the name and. Uh, uh, selecting a deployment target that is shared space, uh, shared space that's by default Cloud 2.0, um, and you can deploy applications. This is one of the approach that we can um, we can employ uh, to deploy an applications to Cloud 2.0, and another approach is uh, using a CI, uh, using an endpoint CLI. So this can be used. Um, um, any point CLI can be used uh, if you want to automate your deployments uh, using some Node.js applications or any other any applications, or you can use it in a, in your CI/CD pipeline as an alternative for Maven as well. Uh, uh, but uh, this is one of the one of the very good options that we can use. Um, any point CLI command line interface. And then uh, you could use any CI CD tools that is available, for example, Jenkins, Bitbucket, GitLab, Azure. Those are some of the examples where you can deploy your CI CD, uh, deploy your applications uh, via your CI CD pipelines. And uh, this is this option that we are going to um, have a look at. <coughs> and a uh, couple of other options are. We could deploy an application using any point RESTful APIs. So there are platform APIs, platform RESTful APIs available in uh, Mule where we can, you just need to authenticate it using the credentials and then you will get an auth token. Uh, and then using that token, you can do number of actions here where you can deploy applications. So you should, you should get all the endpoints from your exchange Okay, so if you if you look at the platform APIs, so let me actually, um, if you search for platform APIs exchange, so exchange APIs. So this is one of the APIs. This one is for the exchange. Okay, and uh, you have um, APIs for um, other uh other for example if you want to access your object store v2 you can have an object store v2 api manager you have an api for api manager so um what does it mean is for every features that is available in mulesoft mulesoft has exposed this as a stressful endpoint so that it can be um, those features in the any point platform can be used in used in multiple ways so let me actually share this with you. Um, if you're not aware of these options. So um, you, you do have a runtime manager API. Uh, that's a different set of APIs specifically for runtime manager where you can deploy your applications programmatically to cloud up. So these are the options that we have for deploying the applications to cloud up 2.0 <coughs> okay so we are going to look into how do we deploy or create um, deploy an application cloud up 2.0 using the mule maven plugin and creating the ci cd pipeline in the bit bucket okay uh fine so now in order to create your um 
CI/CD pipeline, the first thing is to you need to configure your pom.xml file uh, in such a way that it it takes certain commands. For example, uh, it should it should take the maven mule command uh, command. So you basically need to pro uh, provide all the details of where you are going to deploy your application which business group that we need to select, which environment that we need to select, and what is your um, replica size, what should be your vCore, um, your username, password, etc. So all these needs to be provided. And we will be providing that in, in a plugin called Mule Maven plugin. <coughs> so this is a plugin. Give me a second, guys. So this is a plugin that's created, um, that's by default available whenever you create a Mule application. You just need to add the configurations inside it. And uh, these configurations are available um, to you from the docs.mulesoft.com. So if you just search for your um, cloud up to deployment using Mule Maven plugin, um, Plugin. Uh, so you're going to it will uh, you you will have a docs.milsoft.com which will have your <clears throat> options. So whatever need to be added, and you also get to have the descriptions of each um, what uh, what what uh, attribute that you need to provide and what is the description for that. Okay, so we'll we'll go through some of them. Yeah, so now, so that configuration needs to be added. Uh, now, uh, once you add the configuration, so this is very similar to CloudUp configuration. Okay, so in case of CloudUp, you just need to change the tag uh, and few other configurations as well. It's just CloudUp deployment. And then for CloudUp 2.0, it's CloudUp 2 deployment with uh, some changes in the configurations. <clears throat> okay, and then we should use a maven command uh, maven minus mule deploy minus d mule deploy. So minus d is a flag, um, and then mule deploy, you are just instructing the maven to uh, look for your configurations inside the mule maven plugin. <clears throat> okay, so we'll, we'll discuss more on this maven deploy and mule deploy. Yeah, but these uh, configuration needs to be added. Now, the interesting thing about um, Maven is, <coughs> oh, sorry, Cloud Up 2.0 is where does the repos where does the artifact is located, right? Now, um, in case of Cloud Up 1.0, uh, when you deploy an application, your runtime manager itself is a repository. Your runtime manager itself is a repository and it stores your last artifact Art artifact uh, which i meant is the jar file it stores your last jar file deploy so that uh, the cloud up fabric will uh, cloud up fabric which is responsible for deploying your cloud up 1.0 applications will take care of um, redeployments if your server is down uh, uh, those kind of activities for zero downtime deployments and all. Okay, now uh, there is no other uh, in cloud of 1.0. There is no uh, no other place where we store the artifacts. Where we store the um, uh, that jar file, right? So you usually use some artifactory um, kind of model in a ci cd pipeline you store your artifacts in some other repositories like nexus repositories or some other repositories so that you can use that artifact as a backup at a point of time <coughs> but uh, in case of cloud up 2.0 and also in runtime fabric and uh, all the other runtime fabric solutions uh, the artifact is um, stored in a um in the exchange repository right so when you deploy an application um, it first publishes an artifact uh, artifact into the exchange and then deploys the applications to cloud up 2.0 so 
So instead of storing your um, jar file in the in the exchange, uh, in, in the runtime manager repository, it stores in an exchange instead. So that's how runtime fabric also does, right? Uh, so if, when you are deploying applications to cloud up 2.0 using a Mule Maven plugin, it is important that you specifically run this particular step to publish your asset to the exchange first and then deploy your applications. Okay, so when you deploy an application directly from your UI, it is not necessary because it under the hood takes care of doing it. So when you deploy an application over here, um, let's say I say demo project, I deploy application, upload file. Uh, let's see, I'm not sure if I have any files. Uh, I don't have. Um, yeah. So let's say um, it's a jar I'm trying to upload, and then I upload and I deploy this application. So I manually. Okay, and then it deploys uh, it to the um, necess the respective pod that is residing in the Ohio region. Okay, so this particular step, uh, we are not manually doing it in uh, publishing it to Texium. We are not manually doing it when you are manually deploying an application, but when you are writing a CI CD pipeline, this, uh, uh, when you deploy an application cloud up to point through, it won't automatically publish it to exchange. You need to run this step first and then deploy. Uh, so, okay, some kind of permission, but anyway, let's go and see it in exchange. Not sure. It's... So, you will not be able to see it um, in here, but you'll be able to because it's an asset, uh, which is the hit. You need to add a and type equal to app so this uh, query parameter you would, you would need to add this query parameter in order to see that application uh, anyway it's not published but you can see that it's uh, i've just tried out the pipeline things and it, it is published but i um, not sure why it's for somehow uh i got it so that's because it, it is dependent on a parent form and then um, it is not deploying. So this particular application is dependent on a parent form. Maybe I could try a different application, I guess. Um, all my applications will have a parent form anyway. Let's see this. I will use a this version. Test project. Yeah, that's deployed and now Yep, you can see that um, it the asset is published to Exchange, right? So this only happens for Cloud Up 2.0 and Runtime Fabric um, deployments. It doesn't happen for Cloud Up 1.0. That's because uh, Cloud Up 1.0 stores its last artifact in the Runtime Manager repository itself, but uh, Cloud Up 2.0 and Runtime Fabric and every other uh, deployment model stores it in the Exchange. Okay. So it is. It has many advantages. Um, I would say uh, because when you want to revert it, let's say that you want to, mm, you have deployed a, a version which is errored out. Um, let's say to one point zero point one, and if you want to move that when move it to a previous version, uh, in cloud of one point zero, it was not possible, right? Uh, but in cloud of 2.0 you can it is possible because you can import it from the exchange now and you can search for that asset um so asset and um 
yeah so this is one and you can search what version that you want and then you can select it so which which is really um, helpful when you want to revert your uh, char into a different uh, a previous version of char file okay so let me let me know if you have any questions regarding this uh, specific um, section so as I said, uh, you need to deploy your application, publish your applications to Exchange first, and then deploy it to the uh, Cloud Up 2.0 location. Yeah. So in order to publish your asset to the Exchange, uh, you would need to use a distribution uh, management tag, so which um, which uh, is a Maven Fazar API. Okay, it, it has the Maven Fazar API location. So V3 location with your organization ID, and then um, <clears throat> you would uh, you would run the command MV and deploy. So which will deploy the applications to, uh, which will publish the asset to the exchange, and then you can deploy the application to cloud. <clears throat> Any doubts here till now? So Anub, uh, we have a question from Rahul. So Rahul is asking: Is there a limitation? On number of versions stored in exchange uh no no uh, as far as i i understand no uh, but i guess exchange itself uh, you there is some limitation to the ex uh, artifacts that's available in the exchange okay but it's it's a huge number um <clears throat> but uh, uh, I'm, I'm not sure um, so whether we have any limitations or not. I, I don't think, no, I have not heard about it. Yeah, I don't see any discussion point also for this anywhere. So, yeah. Yeah, anyway, thanks. Thanks. Um, okay, so a couple of things that's there uh, that you can, you can have a look uh, so when when you publish an asset to the exchange right it will be available for it will be available temporarily for seven days right for example when you publish an asset to the exchange it will be available uh, you can delete the existing asset um <clears throat> if, if you deploy a publish an asset like say 1.0.0 uh, you could delete the asset uh, within seven days and then you can publish the same version number 1.0.0 itself okay but once uh once asset is there for the seven days and after seventh day even if you delete the asset it will not allow you to publish the asset with the same version number right uh, because it, it when you deploy application then it will say that the version number with that group id artifact id in version gav is already existing Okay, so that's a seven day limitation. Uh, so if you're going to delete an asset, you need to delete it before seven days. Otherwise, that will become a permanent uh, asset and you will not be able to, even if you deleted that, uh, what we call memory re re retains, <laughs> you will not be able to use the same version number anymore. Good. So, so that's about the cloud up to and uh, the deployment how you are going to deploy the applications cloud up to now we'll see an overview of uh, the ci cd <coughs> pipeline that we uh, that uh, general pipeline that we uh, usually do in projects okay so now um, you will have your source code in your any point studio that's in your local system and then you will uh, check in your changes uh, to uh, different uh, branches, let's uh, say your feature branch, your dev branch, or um, etc. Yeah, let's say you you are checking to your feature branch, and then you you will use some kind of a source control systems like GitHub, Bitbucket, um, SVN. Uh, if you have been, or you can use Azure. So there are multiple ways, source control systems, any source control system, and then once uh, the the changes are checked in and pushed to the source control system it will trigger the ci cd pipeline right so, so there are multiple ways that you can trigger the ci cd pipeline 
uh, when you do a check-in, it can trigger the CI/CD pipeline. Or when whenever you are doing a pull request from one branch to other branch, you can do a trigger of the CI/CD pipeline. Or you could, or whenever you are tagging a particular commit, when you tag a particular commit, you can have a C trigger of that CI/CD pipeline at that point as well. So that depends upon. Um, the project to project depends upon the requirement from the client or your technical architect. It's it's purely, I would say, it's a personal choice. Um, there is no um, pros and cons of doing it. Depends upon what is the culture that uh, been follow, following in that particular organization. Uh, we could use any any of the triggering mechanisms. <coughs> so, uh, uh, for example, I've worked in a project like where we have um, pull request as a trigger, and then um, so that's only um, uh, normal deployment for um, development and uh, uh, SIT and UAT phase. Okay, we had a CI/CD pipeline. And for the production, um, even though we have a CI CD pipeline, it's a controlled deployment, which means that it's a manual trigger. Okay, so you had pipeline created, but they don't want uh, it to have it automated. They want it manual at a particular time. Someone will run that particular CI CD pipeline. So it's a manual trigger for them. Okay, uh, or else you can also automate that one as well, but depends upon personal choice. And then uh, in the in the pipeline, you can have multiple uh, various range of stages, right? Um, you could have a test stage, and you could run integration test. You could run a sonar cube validation test. Uh, you could publish your assets to the artifactory. So generally, that's the case for um, Cloud Up One, and you in Cloud Up Two Point Zero, there is there is a practice of doing that. Uh, you once you get the Asset. Once you build your asset, you publish your asset to a different artifact, artifact, artifact repository. Say a Nexus repository, generally, to a different repository, so that it can be accessed at a later point of time. And then um, you would publish your asset to the exchange, and uh, you would deploy the applications to uh, <coughs> Cloud Up 2.0. Okay, so that's how uh, the general CI/CD pipeline uh, works out. Okay, it can get complex uh, depending upon uh, the company's requirements. You can have multiple agents involved because sometimes what happens, right, before deployment, someone has to manually validate your uh, the existing pipeline, and uh, there can be a manual intervention as well, not automate all the stuff. So th there are multiple. Uh, Ways that we can do the pipeline creation, right? But here, what we are going to do is the basic one, which is a bare minimum that is needed for the Cloud 2.0 deployments. But and then it can be used to all the projects um, as the base uh, base one, right? So we, as a developer, we are going to check in a code to a Bitbucket repository. And in our Bitbucket repository, we have created a couple of branches, like say feature branch, dev branch, and uh, SIT or a QA branch, we could say, and a main branch that's for the prod, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we will create a Bitbucket pipeline, uh, a pipeline uh, which is going to trigger based on the chicken. Okay, based on the chicken, it's going to trigger. And as I said, there are triggering mechanism. You can have the triggers in multiple ways. And uh, uh, once the trigger, uh, once the pipeline is triggered, it will first publish to the exchange, and then it will deploy the code to Cloud 2.0. So now publishing the exchange is a one-time activity, right? Uh, so you will have multiple environments, and you need to deploy applications to all environments. So once your code has been checked in, uh, publishing to Exchange will only happen at once for all the environments, including. So what I've done is I've, we will create a publish to Exchange stage for only for dev environment. So that's the first environment we have. And then uh, we will deploy the applications to cloud for dev, uh, UAT, test production, everything. 
Okay, so here I represented as a PR request. Here, you, obviously, PR request is also a check-in that is coming in. <coughs> um, um, so here uh, I've just coded in such a way that we we are doing it via check-in, but you can also code it in such a way that only for the PR request alone you can trigger it. Right? So if if there are no questions, I will go to a quick demo on how to do it. So if anybody having questions, please go ahead. We can add it to the chat and we can address. Otherwise, Anu can go to the demo. Okay, guys. Uh, yeah, Anu, we can move on. Cool. Uh, so, see, f first of all, what we need is a repository in your bid packet. Um, so, let's say I would um, I'd create a repository. So, this is one of the basic steps. So, we'll have a repository name. Let's say um, I'm not going to <clears throat> demonstrate or build this end to end. Uh, we don't have time or to build it end to end from the scratch. So what I'll do is I'll just show you the steps of doing it, how it is done. And it should be, um, it should all be have it in your recording and then you can follow these steps to recreate that for your, for your project, okay? So one of the things that you would need to necessarily do is to create a repository or your, whoever uh, is responsible for that should uh, need to create a repository for you. And you need to create that repository. So once you create that repository, and one of the basic things that we can do is to create that uh, Bitbucket pipeline file. Okay, so what I used to do is, uh, see, you can either check in those files, uh, create a YAML file and then check in. Uh, but uh, I would prefer doing it this way, like creating, clicking on the pipeline, by clicking on the pipeline, it will give you uh, whether um, whether you, how you want to create your pipeline. So here there is an option where you can create a pipeline, build a Maven project. Okay, you can select this, <coughs> and once you create a pipeline, uh, it is going to give you a basic script. We are going to completely change this one, uh, but then I need this file. Um, I would like to commit this one. <coughs> So I commit it and then um, it, it will start running immediately, but that's, that's So we have a um, git ignore file and a bitbucket.yaml file, right? So this is how um, you would need to create a repository and then have this error. And you can clone this one into your, um, whichever git client that you're using. So I generally use a source tree, so that's comfortable for me. But whichever, uh, if, if it is a GitHub desktop, you could use that or any other Git, Git client you can use. Okay, so if, with that, uh, we can now go ahead and create a project. So see, I'm skipping that step of cloning that repository into my uh, this one, so because I, I don't need it. Um, and uh, I have already created the project. So this is just a demonstration of what all changes that you would be doing in, in your project if you're if you going to build one, right? So once you clone your project, you need to um, create a new project. So let's say I'll create a project called uh, demo project and uh, so you all know, so now there is a 4.5.2 enterprise edition. So that's a newest version. And if you have any um, RAML um, or any design added, you could just add that to your project, right? Add that to your project. Initiate. So. <coughs> um.
so that's created uh, now i'm more interested you could do all the uh, nice things that you would do to your project like creating your best practices creating all the mule configuration files and all the necessary <clears throat> property files all this can be done uh, but my focus is on the form.xml file so what changes that you would make in this form.xml file in order to build your project and publish that to exchange right so one of the first things so let me open the pom.xml file here uh, so for in, in case of cloud up 2.0 one of the first things that we would do is to change your group id okay so the group id should be your organization id because you are going to publish your asset to uh, exchange okay you're going to publish your asset to exchange your, your exchange uh, group id should be your organization id okay so that change needs to be there so here um, i'm going to get my organization id from the access management if you don't have access to access management you should uh, you can ask your leader so you have a business group and I'm going to business group ID. So I just have one business group. So I'm just using that business group ID as my group ID. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, you have the artifact ID. So artifact ID. Uh, now there is uh, a change to the artifact ID as well. So now when you um, what I've experienced from the projects that you have done is when you publish a, a design. Uh, most most of the time the design api will have the same artifact id and then you are trying to publish your um, application uh, with the same artifact id it, it it won't work right so uh, you create your design api uh, your raml design using demo project uh, demo project itself and then you try uh, then it will have an artifact id as demo project itself right and then when you when it comes to application you cannot have demo project as artifact id because you need to publish the asset to exchange and 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 uh, with the same artifact id it, uh, exchange cannot uh, two different app types of applications cannot live in the exchange okay so, so I don't, uh, just yeah. sorry to sorry to interrupt you a couple of things one thing can you just zoom it a little bit more, you know, because we have a, a feedback that, you know, it is not very clear. Yeah, that should be fine. And second thing, um, is there any jar size limitation in Cloud Up 2.0? Uh, any, is there any size limit when we deploy a project? 200 MB or something like that? Yeah. Um, so in case of Cloud Up 2.0, we had, uh, cloud up 1.0 we had um so in case of cloud up 2.0 i guess it is still 200 mb of size right um, but um environment so i'm just looking into the documentation maximum there's no such documentation um so you can just have a look at um, okay so there are certain limitations that's available uh, but a 200 mb should be the size um but yeah so that is application up to 350 mb <clears throat> yeah so that's for cloud up 2.0 so that's a size so it's a learning for me as well and then yeah these are things like i'm i'm very interested on uh, when connecting meetups and all right i learn a lot of things and as an instructor as well that's okay um, yeah nice fine um now that artifact id you need to be a little bit careful upon so um so generally we recommend having or adding an hyphen app uh, at the end so that you have a unique artifact id right and then version earlier it was exchange was not allowing uh snapshot versions but uh, with the latest uh, 
changes now we decided adding um, snapshot versions. And then uh, you would need to build upon your property. So you have uh, a properties uh, tag, which has certain properties like uh, your source encoding, output encoding, your app runtime. So that's 4.5.2 and your Mule Maven plugin version is 4.4.0. So that's being used over here. Okay, so when you create a new project, uh, you can just have a look at the build section. So it has two plugins that's added. So one is a Maven Clean plugin, and Maven Clean plugin is the plugin from the Apache um, Maven. Uh, so it's a plugin that's created, uh, provided by the Apache Maven. It's not the MuleSoft specific plugin, so and, uh, it does the basic cleaning of your project. So basically deletes your target folder, that's it. And then you have a Mule Soft specific plugin. That's a Mule Maven plugin. A uh, Mule Maven plugin is the one which is responsible for, or to be precise, it is the one that tells your Maven how to build your project, right? Um, it tells Maven that uh, it is a jar application. You need to package it as a jar, not as a zip or var or whatever else. It is, you need to package it as a jar. And uh, when you run a specific command, like when you run Maven clean test, you need to run the immunity test. When you run Maven clean package, you need to package your application. So Mule Maven plugin is the heart of your uh, code, which instructs the Maven to, uh, to uh, tell, uh, which instructs the Maven to, um, Maven that how should you build your application? Right. Okay. So that's there. So this is where uh, we are going to change um, the things. And uh, you have dependencies. That's your dependencies. So what all dependencies that's been added to your project? And then you have a repository section. Now. Repository sections are nothing but uh, it is just uh, <clears throat> see uh, when you when you add a dependency, right? Uh, Maven needs to download these dependencies from some locations. Like right? one is a Mule HTTP connector dependency, socket connector dependencies, and uh, you will tell Maven. So repository sections are nothing but you are just instructing Maven that you need to look for the repositories in these repositories, right? So that's basically two different default repositories. So one is the exchange repository, and another one is the MuleSoft releases. That's a public repositories available, uh, provided by MuleSoft. So these are the two repositories that generally gets added. Okay, so this is just instructing the Maven that uh, you need to download. Uh, Maven needs to download the dependencies from these um, repositories. So it will search for these repositories, and then if it couldn't able to download, it will just throw you an error. And then obviously, plugin repositories <coughs> are something. Um, so if you have, in order to download your plugins, okay. So now in order to download your plugins, it will look for the plugin repositories. Okay, so plugin repositories again, it's the same MuleSoft releases repository. This point. Okay, so now we will go and edit these sections and uh, we will make it um, compatible to deploy applications to Cloud Up 2.0. Okay, so a few things. Uh, one first thing is as we, as we discussed in the slide, we need to um, add the configurations, necessary configurations for your Mule Maven plugin. Okay, so for that here, you'll have a configuration section and then you'll add the necessary configuration. So for that, I'm going to use, so here when you, here you can see that this particular section is the configuration that's needed. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to use a different, a little different one for this one 
because I have just created a complex one. I'll be sharing this project with you uh, for a reference. So I've created it in a public repository and I can share it with you. So, um, a second. Okay, so I'm just going to add this. So I added a couple of bunch of uh, code over here. So let me explain you what it is. Okay, um, so cloud up to deployment tag. It's the same tag that's available in this this one. And then you can you can refer to this each one of these in your yeah, this one. So we search for business group over here. So we we'll have the tag called. Um, business group so which says that business group should be the uh, business group id or uh, business group location where you're going to deploy application so since uh, for me it is i'm just getting it from a property called ap dot business group okay and then we have environment ap dot environment which environment we are going to deploy to whether it is a um, development environment so this environment is uh, you are any point platform environment as in uh, available in your uh, if you go to your business group and then you go to your environment so i've created these three environments the dev prod and SIT. these three are the environments of type sandbox okay this is a trial account and i don't have access to production so i've created environments for the sandbox itself so dev prod and SIT. Okay, so that environment, and then you have uh, which uh, target that you're going to deploy to. <coughs> so you're going to deploy to a cloud up 2.0. Uh, you, you can only deploy to a higher location because it's a trial account, but you'll be able to see different uh, uh, targets over here. Cloud up 2.0, if you search for your Targets, it's not there. Okay, target. Yeah, cloud up to point the target name. So you will get the list of regions. What are the list of regions that is available? So you are going to get. So you can deploy to different um, regions. So cloud up US East, US West, US West Two. So Ohio is. US East 2. So we are going to deploy to US East 2. So that's a target. And then you have your mule version. So that needs to be a semantic version that is 4.4.0, 4.5.2, etc. <clears throat> Provider is MC. I'm not, I'm not sure what why it is. What is this? But we need to we need to give it as MC when we are deploying to Cloud, cloud Up 2.0. We don't need to provide this value for Cloud Up 1.0. And then you need to specify the replicas, the vcos, um, the application name, um, what name that you're going to deploy to, etc. And um, deployment timeout. So all these are normal. So here, um, as a best practice, I'm not using the um, cloud up or any point platform username or credentials to deploy the application. So instead, I'm using a connected app, client ID, and secret. Right. So this uh, is one important um, but it's applicable to cloud up uh, 1.0 as well. So when you're deploying the application, so make sure that you use connected app instead of your uh, your cloud up username and password. Okay, That is no longer recommended. The reason being when you pass a cloud up username and password, even though it is encrypted, you are giving unnecessary access to your cloud up deployment. So cloud up deploy, cloud up um, when you're doing it via CACD pipeline, you just need to deploy this application, right? So you just need to give the necessary access to your uh, application. So you can create connected app um, from your access. So if you go to your access management, you have a connected app and you have an option to create a connected app. So one of the basic ways, uh, so you can either create it on behalf of a particular user 
or you can create an app name and then act as its own user right um so this app will act as a user and then provide you necessary permissions you can add necessary permissions to it okay so it is available in the internet what all permissions that would be needed so um if you search for connected app permissions uh, cloud 2.0 so you will you are going to get those permissions so these are the permissions that you would need to get it so let me actually share this in your um, meetup group. Yeah. So you can create the connected app and it is going to give you. Um, so what I have done is I've created a connected app uh, for both my exchange and uh, cloud app. So for the cloud app deployment, so it, it have created the necessary permissions. And it is going to give me a client ID and secret, right? So which one, it, this will give access to only deploy applications to uh, the cloud app. Okay, so which is just a recommended approach. So you need to provide the client ID and secret and the grant type, how it is, and restore all the properties that the general properties that you would use. So for example, if you want to uh, enable your uh, any point visualizer, you need to provide this flag. If you want to provide your mule environment, depending upon what in, uh, variable that you're using, you can provide this variable. And if you want to secure your properties, so in case of Cloud Up 1.0, we use mule artifact.json and then we added secure properties tag and added it there. Uh, it is no longer needed in case of Cloud Up 2.0. You can you can have the secure properties inside your secure properties stack. So which will secure this property, basically mask these properties in the runtime manager server. Uh, that's a small logic server. So, so in one of the projects I've used some more logic. So that's what that is. And if you're going with the HTTPS, you need to enable last mile security. Uh, if you don't need a public URL, uh, you, this one. And if you want to enable object store, you need to enable that to true. So it's all available in that documentation. So I've just taken that from the documentation itself. Um, documentation, you, you should be able to refer to this, not this one, this documentation. It's all in there. Yeah, so that's a cloud up. Um, configuration that we needed so what I, what I will do is I will also add a few other properties to it so in fact uh, what I'm going to do it now is see these are the basic things that you would need to add so let me explain you with the project which I've created I'll close this one Okay, so I've created a basic project uh, which has all the best practices. I've also checked in checked in the project um, to my um, GitHub public repo, so you can you can actually refer that <clears throat> at a later point of time. Um, so you can just see this video and refer it. It's the same project. So I've um, um, deployed this application with all the best practices and created the certificate the property yeah, no, but i think maybe here also you can increase the size if you could, yeah. uh yeah so this one <laughs> we cannot increase the size of this one <laughs> we oh. can increase the size of a page but uh not this one yeah yeah i'll increase the palm file maybe your resolution yeah yeah no problem Fine. So uh, you can you can have a look at that. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm not going deep into this um, um, aspects of it. Uh, so here, what I wanted to show you is I've created the group by the same thing. Uh, instead, the artifact ID is different. 
project here, I've added a couple of more properties, right? Uh, so which is, see here, the properties are general properties that we use um, for your, your Pomod XML file. Okay, so what I've done is I've created few properties uh, which can which uh, you could use it for your different uh, deploying applications to different environments. So I've created a uh, properties. So these are not uh, important now, but you could refer it later. Um, you have mule dot environment, and then how dynamically creating the deployment uh, name of the deployment. Okay, so cloud up. Uh, to deployment, I'm going to deploy that into a cloud up to cloud up US East to region. So that's a region that I'm going to deploy. That's Ohio region. And then cloud up replica is uh, one. I'm going to deploy it to one replica that's uh, equivalent to one worker. We call is point one. And then this is for my API auto discovery. And this is for my connected app, etc. And what I've done is I've just uh, marked everything. So what, how this is helps you, it, 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 you can use this um, project, uh, you can use this POM file for literally every project. You just need to make it few adjustments. And uh, you added all the variables. I've all, all, also added a plugin for MUnit Maven plugin. So that's for your, um, M unit. Okay, so these are the executions, and then I've created um, the coverage reports where we can <coughs> uh, some of the best practices um, included, but I'm not uh, going into detail here. Constraints. So, uh, and it depends upon the project to project anyway. Fine. So those. Once I, um, I also have a couple of dependencies like HTTP connector, API kit module, I've created a design and then published that to Exchange. And then I've added some test cases to run it. I'm um, using a RAML dependencies to it. And then you have the repository stack. So that's all uh, same. So what I've added in the repository section is one more uh, repository tag. Uh, which is very similar to the one that's in the exchange. So exchange v3 here is exchange v3 deployment.app.org ID. Okay, so which, um, so with this, uh, we can remove this one. Okay, you you no longer needed it. I, I've just added this as a reference because, uh, but see, uh, if we have this deployment.ap.org ID, so this, deployment.ap.org ID variable should be provided dynamically. Okay. And uh, you need to <clears throat> need to see where you provide it right here. For me, what I have provided it here is deployment.ap.org ID I've provided over here, and which is the organization ID. Yeah. Uh, so that particular repository I've added. So that is specific to See, um, when you you are you are bidding, uh, you are letting Maven to be a little more smarter, uh, telling Maven to search in this particular particular repository, exchange repository, rather than searching in all the other exchange repositories. <coughs> and then, if you want to run your Maven in your CI/CD pipe, run your EM unit in your CI/CD pipeline. You need to have your MuleSoft Enterprise Nexus repository access. Okay, so that is depending upon and so you will get a MuleSoft Enterprise repository access per organization. Um, so if you don't have your access, you can ask your managers uh, for access to it. It should be if you have an Apoint platform um, account, then you should have access to it. Not the trial account, but the enterprise ones. And then I have plugin repositories. Um, and then for plugin repositories, also I've added a releases e repository. So that's needed for my immunit. And then finally, I have my distribution management tag. Okay, distribution management tag is necessary in order to publish your asset to exchange. So you would publish your asset to exchange and then deploy it to cloud up 2.0. Right. So 
So these are the POM configurations that we have. And in order, see, generally you have done it in Cloud of 1.0 projects. Generally, in order to provide your air credentials for your exchange, you would use a settings.xml file. Right. So here also I've used a settings.xml file. Um, let me actually show you that. Okay, looks like, oh my God. I'm not sure whether it got stuck. So hang on, let me, Okay, for some reason, my finder window is not opening. Mm, interesting. Anyway, so what I'll do is I'll show it from here. The so settings.xml file that needs to be created <clears throat> okay, that needs to be created and added to your, uh, I've just masked uh, the credentials over here. So here uh, you'll have access that to the in, the, in the GitHub anyway. Yeah, so probably here, I know this you can zoom a little bit from the browser probably. Okay, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so here uh, the settings.xml file needs to be added to your M2 repository, right? I hope uh, most of them are aware of it, to your M2 repository. So you have your settings tag and you have your server tag. So we usually provide your username and password as our any point platform username and password and then encrypt it. <coughs> so here instead, we are using a connected app. So in order to use a connected app, you need to use tilde, 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 client, tilde, tilde, tilde. So this is a format and then you need to have your ex, uh, in order to publish your asset to exchange, you need to have your exchange connected app client ID. Okay, and then tilde, question mark tilde, and then your exchange connected app client secret. Okay, so I've added for the both the server types, which is not necessary. You can only have it for one, um, the one that you're using for with the ID. And then you need to have a server tag for your um, MuleSoft Enterprise Repository. Now this ID, you need to be careful with this ID. It needs to match with the ID that is available in your, um, in your studio. Uh, so, okay. Okay, nothing seems to be helping me. Why it is? Okay. <laughs> so when I share, Something is happening. I don't need to file. Anyway, so it needs to be uh, very much. You need to check in for the ID. Okay, that that ID should match. Okay, even for the distribution management tag, the distribution management tag ID and your repository ID should match with the ID that you have in your exchange uh, you have in your settings.xml file okay so that should be available come on man i don't know 
what's happening. Okay, I look like your studio is frozen. Yeah, I'll just close my studio. Um, so yeah, we, yeah, settings are XML file. Okay, so now um, once we created this uh, Maven configuration and your settings are XML file, now you are ready for creating that Bitbucket pipeline. Okay, but let me actually give you the command. So once you created that, what you can do is you can run it, test, and see whether it is publishing to Exchange or not. Uh, so, um, so when you run your project, you just need to run MVN deploy and minus D. If you have provided any keys like mule dot env um, equal to dev and then minus D, uh, I've created a secure. Secure dot key. Um, so that's a key. So you can now publish an asset to exchange. So now when I, when I try to publish asset to the exchange, um, you'll see something interesting. <coughs> so I'm trying to, this is the first step. I'm trying to publish asset to the exchange. So that's, uh, for that also, you will use the same command, MV and deploy. So when you use, uh, so that's where you need to uh, know the difference of using the minus D mule deploy command, right? So when you use an MV and deploy command, uh, it is going to when you use, uh, which is, uh, yeah, when you use an MV and deploy command, it uh, Maven will search for the distribution management tag, and then it will try to publish your asset to the exchange. Okay, that's what Maven does. Okay, and this is how it is trying to publish the asset to the exchange and it got a build failure and that's because um, <clears throat> I don't know. An expected error while processing the publication artifact would not be filed. I was expecting a different error. And I could not able to open the project as well. Give me a second. <coughs> so I'll open this. There is not much information. Artifact could not be resolved. Uh, let's see. So I don't have any changes to my. Bitbucket pipeline. Um, yeah. So hang on. Let me go to this looks like I'm using a different show in system explorer and then I'll use a terminal window over here I mean clean what 
verify. L dot env env equal to dev. Okay. Let me see. So MVN clean verify is going to verify um, whether it's um, the the build is everything is looking fine or not. <coughs> Yeah, that's right. And I will do <coughs> MVN clean deploy command. So one of the things that you need to be very careful when you're deploying the application, right? Uh, when you publish your asset to exchange, your asset already has a version installed in your exchange. So let me show you and uh, type equal to app. Um, so you have your Bitbucket pipeline project already there, and then you have your version 1.0.0 already available. So when you try to deploy application with a version um, 1.0.0 again, it is going to throw you an error. Okay, so that's uh, what I was trying to uh, demonstrate but it should give you that error but it is not giving me um so let me change that version and see so this is 1.0.0 i'm going to change to 1.0.1 and uh, i will run the pipeline Uh, it's not running the pipeline, it's just publishing the asset to the exchange. Yep. Uh, Okay. Looks like I'm missing anything. But I'm not very sure of what I'm missing. Let me check. Um, Artifact. That is point four point zero. That's right. Okay. Um, I'll just try once again with hyphen x and try to identify if there is any error. <clears throat> if not, we will directly go to the pipeline and. Uh, we will look into how pipeline works. Uh, so I know there is a question from Suresh actually. So he's asking yeah. from where you are serving the credentials to settings.xml through pipeline or what? Yeah, yeah, uh, that's right. Uh, I'll, I'll show you how uh, that is done for your settings.xml file and all the other uh, configurations. 
So here, uh, it says artifact could not be restored, unable, unable to error while processing the publication. Exchange publication failed. Unexpected error while publishing, processing the publication. Artifact could not be resolved. Uh, it says unauthorized. Okay, that's interesting. Mm, but maybe my M2. Oh, okay, hang on. Um, so that's an error from my side. I've not provided the things properly. Hang on. Um, so I I'm not showing you the settings.xml file uh, because that has a uh, credentials which I'm using anyway that's in anyway shown so this is the one so I had an error uh, in here so I was using the same uh, IDs okay so I'll just uh, I've just added that now I can run this one so what I'll do is I'll just um, show you the error just run this one with zero and uh, we will just see. So that's how, that's what minus X will do. So minus X, it's just, uh, we are doing a debug logging. Um, so debug log will help you to give you the uh, more detail if, if that's. So now it should try to publish that to exchange and then it should fail because we are using the same version 1.0.0. Yep, we can see that a publication ended with errors and asset already exists with version published in the life cycle state, right? So you cannot deploy that uh, with the same version. So that's, um, which is again a difference from the Cloud of 1.0. In Cloud of 1.0, you don't have to change the version. You could deploy it any number of times you want. It will overwrite it, right? But not with Cloud of 1.0. So it's mandated that you need to update that uh, your versions. So that it, uh, your version management is uh, taken care and then you can revert back to your previous versions whenever you need it. <coughs> okay, so now I'm publishing that to my exchange um, with the different um, different version. So now it should publish that, um, publish it successfully to the exchange. So it's downloading, everything is okay. <coughs> it's loading. Um, takes quite a while to upload. Okay, that's done. Yep, so you can see that it's publishing to Exchange and um, publishing the asset and then <coughs> that's completed. Um, so you can just see, so you, it, it gives, it also gives you a link of where you can just go and see, 
um, or you can just go to your this one um, exchange and then provide the type equal to app and then you should be able to see so you can see and type equal to app so you should see the asset bitbucket pipeline and then you, you should be able to see both the versions of your applications okay with and then you can run your maven command so this is a command so what i'm what i'm doing is i'm not sure if i can zoom it or not yeah uh, you can see that here so here um mvn and then i'm um, just instructing the maven to use minus d mule deploy so which is so it, it will then check for the configurations inside the mule maven plugin instead of the distribution management tag right it will look for the configuration inside the mule maven mule maven uh, plugin tag and then it will deploy okay and then we are just passing the values that we are being <coughs> using so you have uh, ap dot client id your client id uh, ap dot client id so that's a connected app uh, client ID that we have been passing. So I can show you that. So over here. So AP dot CA dot client ID and uh sorry that AP dot client ID AP dot client secrets so that's for your um environment client id and client secret for your api manager instance and then you have your api.ca.client id have your api.ca.client id and you consider client secret so that's for the connected app client id and client secret so we're just providing the credentials for deploying applications to cloud up so cloud up credentials and api.environment which environment that you're going to deploy to so this should be there um that should be dev um as well and then mule.env dev secure dot um, key is this one so now you can deploy run this command um to deploy uh, applications to cloud so the reason why i'm running that in command prompt is we are going to use the same command in your cic pipeline as well so that's why i'm just um showing you how to deploy that in via command prompt and let it deploy so we can just move on to the um and then show you um ci cd pipeline and show you so i just want it it's building the jar and then it will it will start to deploy okay uh, couldn't find environment name dev that's fine so i'll just uh, might have missed the name of the dev environment anyway that's fine uh, we will just try to deploy it via ci cd and see but this is how um, you would need to do it so let's so what i've done is um, let me actually open the file over here um i'm going to oh going to the workspace and then i'm going to quickly open the file which is there um okay here we are so what um command maven configuration that we're doing so i'm just editing the bitbucket pipeline file that we created right um so and then i'm just instructing it to use this ma uh, maven image so it uses this docker image 3.8.4 docker image to run your ci cd pipeline in your bitbucket okay so make sure that you create this file bitbucket.pipelines.yaml the way that i told you that's recommended or you can just create your file on on your own and then just check in it then you will have a few definition few steps here so um so you have your definition so this is just a syntax of how um, the cicd uh, bitbucket pipeline looks 
okay, you need to have a test and you need to name, uh, you need to have a step and then you need to name that step, what step it is. So that is the unique name. I've just given and test. So it is going to do build and test. And caches are something like every time you run your application, it is going to, uh, you, don't, you don't need to download all the dependencies every time. It needs to be a one-time affair. Uh, so it will just use the cached Maven uh, repository, right? And then we are telling, uh, we are running a script, which is building the Mula, basically testing. So here we are running like hyphen mule mbn so that is maven command and minus b and um, <clears throat> minus yes so minus b uh, is for um, uh, um, let me check that i forgot so uh, let me come back to that uh, minus yes is for the settings or xml file um, so we are set we are using a particular settings or xml file which is also checked into that repository um, so here, if you look at the Bitbucket, uh, maybe let me show you the Bitbucket pipeline over here, source. Settings.xml file is also checked into the uh, repository into the main file. So if you, if you are checking it to a specific folder, you need to append the folder slash um, variable over here. Since I have uploaded into the main folder itself, I'm just adding settings.xml file. So you're instructing Maven to use the settings or XML file, and then the general minus D command uh, minus mule dot env. And I'm using a um, repository variables and environment variables. Okay, I'll show you where, where these variables are create variables can be created. So I'm using a variable called deployment env, and for secure dot key, I'm using a variable called secure dot key, and I'm running a clean test. Okay, so this phase this particular step will do the unit testing in testing for you and you could you you could include many other tests as well and so the second test is uh, second step is to publish the to exchange so to publish to exchange the same syntax but the, there is a little bit difference in scri uh, script so you have maven sp you want to say settings dot xml mule.env secure dot key and then you deploy so it will publish that to exchange Okay, uh, just note that we are not using minus t mule dot mule deploy. <clears throat> okay, and then you have a step called uh, and deploy. Then you have the caches and then script. Uh, it's the same script with a different, uh, I mean, slight difference in the script, I would say. <laughs> uh, you have minus d mule deploy. So that will instruct the mule to deploy applications to cloud 2.0 and then you need to provide the all necessary credentials and um, notably you should uh, be able to note that we are not using any hard-coded values over here it's all uh, available in the repositories right so client id connected app client id connect class client secret deployment etc so once you created the steps you can you can then define uh, which all steps needs to be run in which environment, right? So here, um, so I've created a pipe. So once you create all these steps, you can include other steps as well. If you are Sonar Q plugin step or uh, deploying, publishing into artifactory step, etc. And then you need to create a pipeline tag. Um, so here I am. I've just coded in such a way that I, I wanted to deploy my applications to different environments during the check-in process. Okay, so I just created branches. So in, in this case, uh, if you are going to specific for pull request, instead of branches, you will have pull request. If you're going to have for tags, uh, you need to have a use tags. So it is all there in the documentation of the Bitbucket. Uh, you should be able to have a look at it. Uh, so for example, bit bucket deploy. Um, if you search for trigger using tags, so you have um, tags. So you will have a proper documentation. 
Yeah, repository tags. Okay. Bitbucket pipeline tag trigger. Yeah, triggered manually. So always look for the documentation of their proper website, docs.mulesoftcore.com and uh, bitbucket.com. So here they will give you the right informations. So you have, uh, you can create pipelines uh, based on the trigger. So that's custom. Okay, I need to search, schedule, build. Staging, sonar. Maybe a different documentation. Big bucket. Yeah, so you can use tags and then you can use whatever the tag format is um, in order to deploy an application. So if you search for documentation, it will be surely available, more information. So here, um, what I've done is I've just created using branches and then for the dev branch, I'm having a stage. So this is a new um, uh, new uh, addition to the Bitbucket in order to stage a uh, branch. So earlier, um, we used to we we need to create uh, each step for each environment. So if you're going to do test for uh, dev, you need to have test dev and then have the same code duplicated. So now with the introduction of stage, still in beta, but uh, it works. Uh, we don't have to duplicate this steps. Okay, otherwise for each environment you need to duplicate these steps. Uh, basically, each step for multiple environments, uh, so you will, you will need to duplicate it, and then you need to use specific, unique um, variables, like unique variables for that. So you need to have different variables for um, so um, for uh, dev, test, and uh, UAT, like uh, deployment environment, dev, deployment environment, UAT, so essentially the same code. So now we will see how to... I've simplified it now using the stage. Here I'm just telling that for this stage, the deployment is dev. So um, this particular thing is which will point it to the environment variable of your Bitbucket. So let me actually show you that. So here, um, so someone was asking from where, Suresh was asking like where, where we setting this repositories. It's all from your repositories repository settings and then you will see two kinds of setting the variables so one is see in fact three the three ways that we can set the variables one is at a uh, environment level okay so i've created a um, couple of environments so here i've created an environment called dev i've added few <coughs> variables like deployment environment dev secure key client id client secret and any point environment so this is all specific for uh, that particular environment and then you have the same variables for production and as well as SIT or you can call it um, or UAT or QA whatever it is you have the same kind of variables okay and then I'm telling here uh, my deployment my environment variable you need to look for is for the dev and I, I need to run these steps like for this uh, for the dev environment I need to run step for test and publish and deploy. So these are the three steps I need to run for the dev environment. And for the SIT, <coughs> SIT environment, I need to, um, for the deployment is SIT, that's environment variable for SIT. And the steps I need to use is test and deploy. So I'm not including publish because if you run the publish stage in the SIT as well, then it's going to give you an error because you already published the asset. So publishing asset is not environment specific. It is only a single activity. Okay. And then uh, when you're promoting that to a main stage, you can deploy this environment. So you can choose to deploy it manually because many projects I've worked on, they, they, they choose to deploy the production deployment manually, manually in the sense, trigger the pipeline manually. 
So you can choose to trigger the pipeline manually using the trigger tag, trigger equal to manual, you can set it to manual. Okay, so this is a basic um, Bitbucket pipeline that we can use and all the variables. So if, if you are using some common variables, which are uh, which are for your entire workspace, you, you can um, use workspace and workspace variables. So I don't have access to workspace currently, <coughs> but I have deployment variables and then I have repository variables. So I have so many repository variables, which is, which is irrespective of any environment. So connected app client ID. So you can add a new variable and a value and then make it secure. So it will mask it, okay? So you can see that mules of enterprise repo. So that's a settings.xml file variable. Um, I've just added it here. Connected app, client ID, any point, uh, org ID, etc. So that's all the uh, variables that I've added. Okay. Now, um, what I'm going to do is. Um, so what I will do is now um, I'll just update publish my asset to exchange for my this one. I'll just change this to 1.0.2. That's a new version. Save it. And uh, I have my source code uh, where I can see that it's changed to 1.0.0. I'll check in these changes. Um, that form version and then i'll just do a commit <coughs> i'm just doing the push and commit uh, simultaneously so that save a bit amount of time so if you go to this one so it, it public i published that to my um, feature branch okay demo feature branch so that you should now see that it won't should not trigger your pipeline Okay, it won't, it is not triggered my pipeline. So that's uh, three days before pipeline. Uh, but if I do a pull request, so I'll do a pull request from here, from the feature demo branch to my uh, dev branch. Okay, so that's a pull request. I'll create the pull request. And um, as no one is there to approve, I'll just approve myself and merge the code. Okay, I merge the code into my dev branch. Now, if you see, it's going to trigger this pipeline. Okay, so it is going to run. So first it will do the build and test. Um, Rahul, you're saying I'm breaking. I'm not sure. Is it for everyone? Uh, no, it's not Anup. Yeah. Rahul, if you can rejoin, please. Rahul Singh. There's a reply from Rahul. Sounds fine to me. So, Rahul, please rejoin. Thank you. Yeah, so you can see that the build and test phase is done. And then now it started publishing that to Exchange. So it should pick up the respective variables from the <coughs> uh, respective variables from the repositories. So you can see that. Uh, you can see that default variables are there and then repository variables it took these variables any point uh, org id and all and then you have your environment specific variables it took from the specific environment and then you have your settings.xml file and you are we are deploying that <coughs> so it is running <coughs> publishing to exchange phase Um, so 
so it is going to take a bit of time it needs to be downloaded and then upload it uh, meanwhile if you have any questions please ask Yep, that's running. You can see that the publication status is running and then completed and then it started deploying to Cloud. So when you do a pull request from your dev to <coughs> dev to your SIT, it's going to deploy that uh, to your SIT environment respectively. Um, yeah so, fine so i think um i've just covered most of the part which i intend to cover for today um, maybe for some for some people it might be over going over the head but um yeah that's how cacd looks like no see anu when um, we actually take and try it at that time it's a different experience but this was indeed helpful uh, because it gives you direction on, you know, what are things to uh, touch, which we don't get when we ourselves will begin something. Yeah, so yeah that's right. You. Yeah, thank you, Anu. Yeah, I will encourage uh, people if there are any questions which I have missed in the chat because I could see that most of them are answered. Anything else anybody has specifically? You can follow MuleSoft community. In MuleSoft community, you will find all, all of us. We are very much active on LinkedIn. Please do ask questions if you have anything. And this presentation, which we have recorded, uh, will be uploaded. OK? So uh, you can definitely, the people who are not able to join but registered and interested in topic, they can see this later uh, when we upload the recording. Any uh, questions? Yes, Rahul, I agree. He has very well explained, Anup. Thank you so much for that. No worries, no worries, Sibiya. Thank you. Thank you, Rahul. Yes, I think I can take this opportunity, Anup. Thank you so much. And we look, look forward to have more uh, such a sessions. Anybody who is interested to nominate themselves as a speaker and have a technical topic to present, please uh, get in touch with me. Uh, my email ID, or maybe you can easily find me um, if you put Supriya Pawar in your soft you will find me definitely and then uh, let's get connected and please uh, please next time also uh, just register to the event and you'll get to hear uh, a lot of good technical knowledge from our respective speakers in future thank you so much everybody anup thank you so much and i'll stop the recording thank you thank you everybody for your time